Mr. Jeffrey Hawkins, I'd like to start by congratulating you on the success of your tenure here as uh, a consul general. Thank you. Now, let's, uh, I'd like to ask what's the most uh, challenging of your time here? Well, I would say um, probably the most challenging moment in my career was the day that we brought the ambassador on Wazobia FM mm. and had him speak peach in, in oh. his interview. <laughs> uh, no, uh, all kidding aside, uh, that was a great moment and I think did a lot for, for uh, Nigerian-American relations. Um, the challenging times, of course, were, uh, you know, when Ebola struck here in Nigeria, that was extremely uh, scary and challenging. And I think um, Nigerian government, uh, the state governments, the Nigerian people and, and the international community reacted very well to that challenge. Um, we had challenges and concerns around the electoral process that ultimately went very well. Um, and there are, you know, challenges to day-to-day -day life as well. But uh, I don't really reflect very much on the challenges. I, I reflect much more on the successes, successes. And, and, and on the great relationship that there is between the United States people and the Nigerian people. I'd like you to um, describe the state of relations between the bilateral relations between Nigeria and the United States in terms of trade, in terms of uh, exchange of uh, intelligence, uh, particularly as it relates to uh, security. Sure. Um, well, I, I think you have to preface any discussion of, of the bilateral relationship with, with uh, an understanding about the nature of the relationship. And, and irrespective of who's in the White House, who's in the villa, uh, who the personalities are, there, there are some very deep commonalities between the United States and, and Nigeria. Um, our regional interests are, are, are largely congruent. Uh, our economic interests are very, are very similar and closely tied. Um, there are all these Nigerian Americans living in the United States and all these Americans living in Nigeria. Um, the, those ties are very deep and very strong. So uh, you're not likely to see a lot of fluctuation um, over time between uh, the two countries uh, in that sort of scenario. Um, I would say that at this moment in time that the relationship is particularly good um, and I think we're focused on a number of key areas here and, and you mentioned security and obviously that's that's one that's very important to Nigeria and very important to the incoming Buhari administration and very much important to the United States and the, the Obama administration and uh, we've seen a great deal of uh, intense cooperation in terms of equipment, in terms of training, in terms of the intelligence sharing that, that, that you're discussing. Um, and that also, as long as there's this very serious security threat in Nigeria's northeast, is, is going to continue strongly. A lot of, lots of uh, Nigerians uh, expected much from the United States. Uh, in the dying days of the, the Jonathan administration, the United States uh, uh, sought to help with some intelligence and, and all of that. You know, we had uh, movements to uh, Borono and Yobe and that uh, parts of the country, but we heard nothing of it. So what what was what came out of it? The United the presence of the United States in, in that well, process. Well, I, th I think uh, particularly in a, in a situation in which you're talking about um, security collaboration like that, um, you're not likely to hear a whole lot about that. Uh, and I can tell you, uh, without going into the details of it, that that cooperation is quite strong, ongoing, and I think extremely helpful to Nigeria. At a point, the Good Luck Jonathan administration was uh, trying to get arms, you know, and uh, the United States stood against it. In fact, at the point, the U.S. was to give uh, out some arms to Nigeria, but uh, said on the uh, excuse that uh, personnel would not be able to use it, personnel do not have enough discipline to, to use them. You, you, you like to talk about this. Well, uh, that, the, that whole debate, um, and I think folks in Nigeria sometimes lose sight of it, um, was centered on one weapon system. Uh, and uh, there uh, is a tremendous amount of cooperation that, that's going on uh, across a wide variety of, of areas in, in the defense realm. And so to just to talk about one weapon system and. Uh, suggest that that somehow represents a, a, a 
decline in the relationship is, is, is erroneous. And I'm reminded of it every time I'm out in the harbor here in Lagos, uh, when I see the NNS Okpabana, which is the, the newest flagship of the Nigerian Navy, which was just turned over, um, and I was there when it happened. Uh, a few months ago, you know, I mean, there's 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 plenty of, of of good work that's being done there, and plenty of good training and and, and good cooperation. Uh, and I don't think we need to get hung up on one weapon system. Recently, the uh, American government says authorities in the U.S. would have a change of attitude to family members of American hostages who seek to pay ransom. Uh, this uh, looks like a subtle shift from the policy that says no negotiation with terrorists. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the, the United States government and, and you know governments across the world uh, are torn between you know some com competing um, interests and issues. And on the one hand, you need to remain absolutely firm and and uh, staunch facing violent extremists because to, to give in to their demands or to, to yield to them only emboldens them and empowers them to, to, to take their, 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 their criminality that much further. Um, on the other hand, you do have real human beings, you have families, you have, you have American citizens um, who are caught in the middle of this conflict between um, you know, uh, countries that believe in rule of law, countries that believe in democracy, countries that believe in pluralism, and extremist groups that don't. Um, and you've got these, these human beings caught in the middle. So I think that there, there's certainly been an effort to try and um, uh, bring those, those two often conflicting things a bit into harmony. Uh, we had uh, instances of uh, hacking into uh, computer systems by, by China. How, how serious is this? Uh, I'd like you to, to, to tell us how serious uh, this situation is and what the United States government is doing. Well, <clears throat> I mean, obviously, there, you know, China's economy is, is large and growing. Um, uh, the United States economy still rep represents the largest single economy on, on the globe. But, uh, you know, the kind of growth rates we've seen in China are phenomenal. Um, and and it, it is uh, really important that, that economies that play that kind of role in the, in the world economic system play by the rules. Um, and, you know, the cyber area that, that you're talking about is, is one of those new areas where, uh, in some respects, they're, they're, the, the rules of the road are less clear, they're less well established. And, and, and so it's very, very important that. Um, you know, we all sort of respect the, the international system and, and respect the international rules that have been set up. Um, and to the extent that that doesn't happen, uh, it's important to, to, to be very firm on that. And, and we've, we've certainly uh, engaged in some rather intensive dialogues with the Chinese government over time about those and other issues. The, 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 there appears to be some renewed interest uh, by the United States in the fight against Boko Haram and other such groups in, in Africa, mm. particularly with the uh, donation of, I think, $5 million uh, to the Joint Task Force uh, fighting Boko Haram. Yeah. Towards the end of the Good Luck uh, Jonathan administration, we didn't seem to see this kind of enthusiasm by the United yeah. States. It does appear that the, the coming of a new administration, the administration of Mohammed Buhari, uh, has uh, uh, engendered some new interest in, in security I, in Nigeria. I would say that, that um, your question sort of uh, very accurately reflects public perception in Nigeria. Um, I don't think the premise of your question accurately reflects the actual reality um, of the situation. And, and uh, the United States is, was committed under the Jonathan administration to fighting Boko Haram. It remains committed to fighting uh, Boko Haram with uh, Nigeria uh, under the Buhari administration. And our, our assistance, as we discussed earlier, is, has been very wide and, and very deep. And, and why is it there? It's because violent extremist extremism of the kind that Boko Haram represents is a threat to U.S. government interests. It's a threat to Nigeria. It's a threat to the Nigerian people. And many, many Nigerians have been killed at the hands of Boko Haram. But beyond that, for us, um, we've seen what those sorts of movements unchecked can do um, to global stability. And so we're very eager to work with Nigeria 
uh, in fighting Boko Haram, whether it's under a Buhari administration, Jonathan administration, XYZ administration, uh, I think you'll find a strong partner in the United States. Now, the, the United States uh, Congress has the Republican Party has a majority in both houses of the United States Congress. Mm -hmm. Isn't that an indication of how the votes would go at the presidential election? Uh, no, I don't think you can see it that way. Uh, and our, our federal system um, is just that, it's federal, and, and the, the, the makeup of, of the Congress doesn't necessarily dictate uh, which way the presidential elections are going to go. Also, we have a very strong phenomenon. You know, our House of Representatives is elected every two years and the president's elected every four years. Um, and it's very frequently the case that in those midterm elections, um, the president and his party lose one or both houses of, of Congress. That's quite common. So uh, it's quite possible that the Republicans could win in 2016, but I don't think the fact that they control both houses of Congress um, tells you much about whether they're going to do that or not. Okay, let's, let's have your experience in Nigeria. Yeah. Although I, I asked about your challenges uh, while here, yeah. you, you, you told me that Ebola. Yeah. Let's have uh, a general view of your experience in Nigeria. Well, I'm, it's been incredibly fun to work in a country that has the, <clears throat> the kind of relationship and the kind of affinity for America that Nigeria does. And, you know, uh, there's ups and downs and bumps in the road and all the rest, but the basic uh, reality of the American-Nigerian relationship is that, that Nigerians like and respect the United States. There's a lot of Nigerians that have lived in the U.S. or have traveled there. They know my country well. We share a language. Um, and the affinities there are very great, and that makes it very easy to work here. Um, I've had such great access. I've had doors are open everywhere. People are interested in the United States. They're interested in our programming. They're interested in, in, in what we're up to and they're interested in our views. Um, and that has permitted me to meet a wide range of Nigerians of all stripes and all, all backgrounds. And that has been a, a real privilege for me. And I really enjoyed that because this is such a super country. Uh, and, and working in a country like Nigeria for a country like the United States is, is really a, a a dream come true for me. Now, two questions. How, how do you think that uh, Nigerians uh, uh, intending to travel to the United States get uh, from the inside looking in? As an insider, you would mm -hmm. be in a position to advise. How do you think that Nigerians will get a better deal? Because a lot of Nigerians complain that the kind of treatment they get at the embassy, uh, they go, go through a lot of uh, stuff for trying to get visa to secure visa and and all of that that's one two do you have you had uh, an opportunity of enjoying nigerian delicacies and if yes like to <laughs> well, those, those are two very different questions yes um but i'll answer the, the first one first um so uh first of all i would uh, there there are certain assumptions in your question that i would challenge um, most Nigerians that apply for a U.S. visa get it. Uh, and we have worked incredibly hard over the three years that I've been here to reduce wait times and um, make sure that, that not only do Nigerians who are eligible get visas, but they get them in a timely basis. And there have been some bumps on the road. And for example, in the last, last few weeks, we've had some worldwide systems issues that have been um, getting in the way of doing that quickly. But generally speaking, we do a very good job on that. I also say, and I know this from personal experience, that uh, Nigerian applicants, and there are many of them, and they don't, and that's a great thing because Nigerians want to go to the U.S. and we want to encourage that. We have a, a limited number of, of officers that do visas, and so we need to move people through here quickly. But um, with that said, I know for a fact that uh, Nigerians are treated with respect and dignity when they come here uh, to such an extent that uh, a very famous Nigerian uh, author who had written critically about, about uh, in, in fiction about uh, experience at the U.S. consulate here. One day I said, fine, I, I, I read what you had written. Um, I want you to come down to the consular section with me. I promise you that I won't tell anybody that we're coming and we'll just go down there and sit and listen to the officer's interview and then you tell me what you think. And I could do that. Um, 
because there's, you know, there's downside risk to that. If I was wrong, that would have been a, a disaster. But I could do that because I knew with 100% certainty that those officers were going to be um, polite and correct. They weren't going to issue every visa, um, but they were going to be polite and correct to those people, as indeed they were when we were there. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with where we are in visas. Uh, as far as <laughs> the, the delicacies are concerned, uh, I'm sort of a meat and potatoes sort of guy, so for me it's star beer and suya every time. Whoa. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank you.